Good morning and welcome to today's uh, virtual bridge session. And it's something close to my heart once again, the subject of copyright. Uh, 10 years I spent uh, slaving over a hot photocopier, of course, paying due attention to the limits statesman that was uh, posted on, uh, above the, the, the photocopier. And then moving on to 10 years as the uh, service manager for JISC Legal. And um, about half of my work there involved copyright. So uh, we tried to call it using other people's stuff online as it happens, but, uh, but copyright it was. And it's interesting how we've kept copyright for the Friday as well. I seem to have always been doing uh, uh, legal slots straight after lunch uh, or, or indeed on a Friday, but good way to end the week. Um, I will put, uh, 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 so uh, I'll do a quick introduction here. We've got uh, James Bennett, who's Head of Rights and Licensing at CLA. And we've got Julie Murray, who is the Education Licenses Manager. I will do a quick um, proviso, and that is, of course, uh, don't assume that your uh, institution has the CLA license. I'm sure most of you here that I see uh, how uh, uh, from institutions, are they, well, they, you'll know whether you have it or not, but uh, there are other ways, of course, to license and to use legally um, information. But the CLA is obviously a major part of uh, the general aspect. And with that, I will invite uh, whichever of James and Julie is going to go first. Okay, thank you so much, Jason. Let me just share my screen. We do have some slides for me to talk to, and I am hoping that you can all see that. If you could yeah. nod, awesome, oh, lovely. Uh, thanks so much. Um, so yeah, hello, happy Friday indeed, um, and thanks so much for um, having us. Um, it's myself and James that will talk you through this session, and um, we're focusing really on on remote teaching because we're very conscious that teachers and institutions are facing such unprecedented times. I mean, it's obviously last night's announcement that it's a prolonged um, lockdown and um, that it's just really just extraordinary times for teachers in order to try and keep making sure that their students are, are learning and progressing. So what we want to do today is really focus on um, the things you can do because we don't want you having to waste time kind of umming and ahhing and thinking, um, what can I do under the license? Um, we really want to focus on um, its potential to support remote teaching. So that's what we'll talk through today. Um, firstly, James is just going to go through a couple of kind of contextual things to talk about copyright generally and um, because we're conscious we might have a bit of a mixed experience in the audience. Um, so he'll just go through some kind of overarching themes and ideas and things to, to take note of. And then it's back to me just to talk about the license and what you can do and some very recent um, changes that we were able to announce, which delighted to um, be able to deliver to you today. Um, and just some services and products that we hope will help you in what we appreciate must be a really challenging time. Um, and I understand that we'll take questions at the end. So please do feel free to submit those in the chat box as we go um, and we'll scoop those up at the end. Um, so thank you very much. I will now pass over to James. Thanks, Judy. Um, so hi, everybody. I um, So first of all, um, neither Julie or I are lawyers. So none of what we're going to be saying is in any way legal advice, but it's trying to describe what the law says and some of the routes through which you can um, use published content um, legally in teaching. Um, so what I'm going to do, first of all, is start off with a quick overview about copyright and copyright exceptions. Um, so as many of you will probably be aware, copyright is the exclusive right of a copyright owner to authorise or prohibit the re reproduction, distribution and communication to the public of their work. So basically authors and publishers can control the use of written content, published content, um, and they, it's up to them whether they want to let people copy it or not, ultimately. However, there are certain exceptions to copyright, which apply particularly when you're using work in teaching. Um, and all of these are relevant they're as relevant when delivering online teaching with digital uh, with digital uh, content as they are when you're using printed works and um, using a photocopier, which we know happens less and less these days. So we've got to keep in mind that what we're talking about here is digital copying um, in this context. So there are three exceptions that I wanted to mention. Um, first of all, first of all, there's a there's a, and the, the, the S, S's are the section of the Copyright Designs and Patents Act, just to give it some kind of structure. But basically, first one is criticism, review, and quotation. So um, that's using small parts for those purposes. Um, and it's important and interesting to note that quotations are 
of just the bits of text that you quote in line with other bits of text that are written. Uh, you can quote images, you can quote music, for example, as well. Um, must be fair dealing. I'll get to that in a minute because the section 32 exception for illustration for instruction is also a fair dealing exception. That's when you're, uh, it used to be kind of when you were writing uh, bits of content on a, on a blackboard, for example, but um, you know, you can extend that into the digital world. So you've got using, um, maybe using an image in a, in a slide presentation or, or some text that's shown on a screen, you know, um, fleetingly using an interactive whiteboard to show some content to a classroom. Um, again, that must be fair dealing. Fair dealing is a concept in UK law. It's not the same as fair use, which you may have heard of related to US law. Um, it basically says that a use uh, under these exceptions must be fair, which means that it is, uh, it's kind of hard to define, but generally um, a small amount is you need to use for the purpose in hand uh, that doesn't really have any independent economic value to the rights holder. Um, and thus a, a reasonable person would consider it fair to use it without um, remunerating the rights holder. Uh, but it's not really been tested in UK law, but basically those sorts of uses that I've just described are generally considered to be fair. Um, the third exception here is the section 36 exception for making copies in education. Um, this is an important one for a lot of the things we're talking about today, because um, it applies to making multiple copies um, for uh, either for physical copies for students in a classroom or um, making available copies on a VLE to students um, who are learning remotely. Um, it uh, is a lot, the exception says that you can make multiple copies of up to 5% of a work in any one year within an institution. Um, the exception also says that this only applies if a license is not available. So, um, the key thing here really is that the CLA license, which Julie is going to talk about in a bit, um, is a license which covers many thousands, millions of different copyright works, books, magazines, journals, and quite a lot of websites too, um, which mean that um, the license applies rather than this exception. And you won't be able to use the exception because you don't need to, because there's a license available that you can get from us, which covers this and more. It's actually much broader than any one year within an institution, but we'll get to that. Um, if a work isn't included in our license, uh, or if it's of the kind of work that you can't get under a copyright blanket license, then uh, potentially the exception could apply to that kind of copying. So it is still relevant, but not to works covered by CLA. Um, so that's uh, sort of my quick overview about how exceptions work. Um, but there are other ways to get to, uh, permission and there are other things we can do. So if Julie, if we can go to the next slide, um, which actually for future reference, yeah, yeah, go back. Yeah. For future reference, if anyone needs it, there is a whole load of information about the stuff I just talked about on the IPO website, the Intellectual Property Office, uh, which hopefully will be helpful to say it's not just CLA saying you this, it's actually uh, the government's guidance as well, um, if you need it to, 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 to refer to in the future. So if we go to the next slide. Um, of course, not all content that you want to use in education is going to be published traditionally, i.e. by a publisher where the author is getting paid and the publisher is selling the content. More and more um, people, creators, um, educators are creating content which is open to reuse and reuse. Um, and I think it would be wrong of us to not mentioned that the, there is a lot of content available under um, almost always now under Creative Commons licenses, which um, are licenses which you can um, release content under, which allow um, to, to, to a large degree free reuse by anybody else on the planet and you can't revoke that. So um, some different sorts of Creative Commons license are uh, CC BY, Creative Commons uh, Attribution Licence, which basically means that anybody can reuse, copy, sell the content that you have released under that licence um, as long as they attribute it to you. Um, and there is also, uh, I'll do one other sort, which is the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Licence, which is that people can reuse, remix, uh, copy the content released under those licences but they just can't sell it and they can't use it in a commercial organization either. 
Um, there's a whole load of more information about out there about free and open content for use in education. Um, but uh, other people are far better versed in that to tell you all about that. So we can move on to the next slide. Um, of course, before I get to uh, how CLA blanket licensing works, um, there is also obviously um, the opportunity to seek direct permission from the rights holder to make a copy of a published work for education if you um, need, if you know that you need to. Um, obviously, there are if there are may well be works uh, that you might want to copy that are not covered by a CLA license, and you want to copy much more than under the you need to, to do that just to check everybody can hear me okay uh, Julie can you hear me okay just give me a yeah it broke up a little bit there so if you don't mind repeating just from uh, to basically the direct permissions thanks James oh I think you've frozen now Julie can you hear me uh, yes you're a little bit tinny a bit robotic um, could you repeat that again, James, about direct permissions? Okay, I'm just making sure because... Yes. Connectivity is obviously not so good in North East London. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, we seem to have lost James entirely. <laughs> so, um, I'll, uh, I'll take over from here, hopefully, until he comes back in. Um, but yeah, so as he was hi, saying... Hi there. Oh, hi, James. I'm back. OK, we can hear you clear now. Hi, yeah, the, um, the, um, the whole Zoom application crashed. Oh. So, What's... I don't know what happened there. Um, I'm just going to make sure that no one else is using Wi-Fi <laughs> in the house. <laughs> Julie, maybe you want to take over from now because this is my last. Yeah, no problem. Slide and you could, is that okay? Yeah, Sorry. no problem. Um, yeah, so as James was saying, direct permissions from publishers is also an option if during um, this lockdown or indeed beyond, um, you're looking to copy some material that um, doesn't fit any of the other scenarios that James has just described. Um, and a lot of publishers will have a dedicated page on their website that uh, facilitates request of direct permission. So that's always an avenue as well. Um, and then the avenue that we're here um, obviously in is our specialism that we're really here to talk about today is blanket licensing and for those of you who aren't familiar with the model that's where a creator um, will decide to opt their work into a blanket license because perhaps it's their, you know it's their livelihood um, and they'd like um, their moral rights their economic rights to be recognized under the blanket license they give us the mandate to grant copying permission and then once our um, once we've collected the license fees and our operating costs are deducted, the money we make in license fees goes back to the creators. And in our case, for our license, um, that's authors, publishers, and visual artists whose material is included in the books, the magazines, the journals that James just referenced. Um, and certainly, I think it's important to say a huge thank you to all the license institutions, because um, we're aware that authors um, don't necessarily make a lot of money. And in this kind of um, point in time, there's so many people affected um, by this kind of the economic implications of the coronavirus measures. Um, so they're another sector that kind of thank you um, for your license payments. So I think it's now moving over to me anyway, um, conscious of time. So what I want to do is just give you some, rather than going through the license as, as a whole or in huge detail, I really just wanted to focus on the things that will help you if you're in a licensed institution to give um, materials to students while you're remotely teaching and while they're learning at home. Um, so firstly, what can you copy? Um, just to reiterate what James has already said, that our license isn't just restricted to books. It does also include other materials that you might wish to be um, sharing with your students, including magazines. So um, you would be able to share those um, as, as always, but of particular note, if you are looking for materials to give students on the VLE um, to work through during this time, then magazines and journals are also included, as well as digital materials like eBooks and e-journals. Um, types of copying, we're very aware that not everybody's going to have a photocopier 
um, in their in their home. Um, it may be that you've got a scanner, so be aware that you can scan materials and email those to students or put those on the VLE. Um, and also, if it comes to it, you can be taking photographs or pages and emailing those to the students. So it's not just about photocopying. We're very aware that you, you can't necessarily get into your institutions and get access to reprographic equipment. There are other ways that you can copy um, and, and indeed type material up um, and give it to your students. And that's all absolutely fine under the license. Um, but of particular note, and I'm really pleased to be able to deliver this news, um, because certainly staff at CLA, including James, um, and publishers have been working really hard to agree um, a relaxing of some of the conditions of the CLA license while um, institutions are affected by coronavirus. So we've got lots of detail on this on our site um, and if you go to our Twitter feed you'll be able to see news stories there. So I do encourage you to look at the detail because there are some um, important conditions to remember or terms to remember but these are two changes that we've made to try and help teachers during this really difficult time. Um, the first one is how much of a printed book can you copy? Now traditionally under normal circumstances that's five percent but um, I'm really pleased to say that publishers um, and authors and visual artists have agreed that that can be increased to 30% during this time. So if you are in need of copying a bit more from a book to give to your students, then you can do so under the license up to 30% of the book. The second change or relaxation that's um, happened, occurred, is ownership of the material. Traditionally under the license, um, we ask that the institution, uh, the terms and conditions say that the institution needs to own the original material being copied from. But again, you know, if you don't have access to your institutions, you can't get into your uh, college library, how can you do that? Well, we have now said that you can copy from your own personal materials at home and issue those materials to students while we're under the coronavirus measures. Um, so that's another relaxation that we really hope will help teachers and help the students as well to, to have a sense of normality during this time. Um, those changes apply until the 31st July or until the institutions reopen, whichever um, comes first um, and we uh, as I say there's really thorough information on our site about um, some of the detail of that and just to bear in mind that we'd be grateful if you can um, tell us what you're copying during this time to help inform that royalty payment wheel that I showed you just a second ago um, because it would be great to be able to keep um, supporting creators, authors, publishers, visual artists um, when their materials copied. Um, I just did want to kind of end really just talking about um, another couple of services that I hope will be of help during this time. Some of you might have heard of CLA's education platform um, and I'll show you a little kind of one minute video of this in a second. Um, but really it's a way to um, make copies remotely. Um, it's a, a digital platform that you can create an account for and in fairness I'll just start the video now and talk you through it. Um, so I'm logged in as a teacher here um, once you've registered, you, uh, you're approved and you can log in and then you can start searching for either topics, books, ISBNs, maybe authors um, and start discovering the material remotely. So it might be that you've got the print book to hand, but what you can do here is unlock the book on the platform just by scanning the barcode with your webcam, as you can see there. Um, and then once the book's unlocked, you and your colleagues can go in, have a look at that book um, and browse that material, see if it's appropriate, select the class that you would like to uh, make the copy for, which you can see happening here, and then you'll just be guided to create a copy. And you, it's as simple as kind of clicking the pages you want, as you'll see coming up here. Um, you'll also notice that bottom bar, that is now including our 30% relaxed limits. And as I click the pages, you can see it noting how many you're copying and also how many you have left um, under the 30%. Um, so whatever I copy here, I can always um, copy again for this class later on if I want to use the book again. Um, and it, all you're doing there is selecting the pages that you're interested in. The next stage is just to um, name it and that's for your own purposes for your own filing and then to tell us the number of students that it's for uh, and that will um, help us make the royalty payments to this author this publisher um, and any other creators involved in its making and then that's the copy made 
So you could, um, obviously, if you're in an institution, you might wish to print that out. But what you can do here is create a link and then you can copy that to your VLE or email to your students. And when they click on it, they'll just be piped straight through to that copy. They don't need any logins at all. There's no student data involved in this. They just get sent straight through to the copy that you can see there. So it's really crisp, clear, high quality copy that the students can still get at. And then it's also filed for you. So if you did want to use this again later, um, then it's there. It's kind of a digital filing cabinet it's stored there for you. Um, that's entirely free of charge. There's no charge to use that surface, but it's eligible. Um, it's open to licensed institutions. So um, it might be that you're a librarian who would like to set up a central account for your institution, or it might be that you're a teacher that wants an individual account. We can cater for both, and it's just a case of heading to educationplatform.co.uk and starting. If you try and register and you notice that your institution isn't on the list provided, please don't worry. It doesn't mean you can't use the platform. Just get in touch, let us know, and we'll get you set up. Um, there's also for those of you um, who have the NLA license to cover newspapers, NLA does have a newspaper library that you can search. It goes back to 2006 um, of national and regional papers, UK papers, and it just helps you make little clippings of articles that you could then send to the students. So if you do have some project work or you do have a comprehension exercise that you want a, a clipping for, then that can help you get digital access to clippings. Again, that's uh, free for licensed institutions to use. Uh, CLA has also developed a copyright essay competition. So if um, for 16 to 19 year olds, and it does come with cash prize. So the top three essays will win um, some cash. So if they are in need of an incentive, you could always dangle that, they might have some money after all this is over. Um, but it's asking students to explore the, the nature of social media and copyright. Um, it does speak particularly to students doing maybe media studies or English, but we've kept it really open. So if there are photography students who want to talk about how phot photographic works are used um, on social media platforms, we'd be delighted to hear from them. They can specialise if they want. So um, do take a look at that and it might be something that students can be occupied with, challenged with while they're on lockdown and we'd be delighted to hear from them. We've already had some um, entries coming in, so that's really great to hear from the students. And then my final piece of advice is um, something we've been asked a lot about is audio copies. And if teachers can read material, record it, and then send it to the students. Um, and that, that came up a lot in the early days of the lockdown. Um, it's fair to say we can't comment definitively because we look after the rights for print material, text and images. We can't give definitive advice. But our parent company, ALCS, the Authors Licensing Collecting Society, who represent authors, do have some helpful pointers and advice on their website about what you can do. Traditionally, you do need permission if you want to make an audio recording um, for text to audio. Um, but because it's not normal times, it's exceptional times, a lot of publishers are giving um, bespoke advice about what you can do. And ALCS have collected some of those pages there for you and given you some advice. So I hope that's of help um, because we were certainly aware that a lot of people were asking about that. Um, okay, I think we've done the video. I think that brings us to the close of our bit. Sorry, we've overrun a little bit. Um, but just to give you some pointers in case you have any further questions later down the line or any um, any problems at all. If you're license based, um, if your question is license based, just get in touch with the top email. And if your uh, question is education platform based, then please get in touch with the second email. If you get in touch, if you get in touch with the wrong one, please don't worry. Of course, we'll answer you. It will find its way uh, to the right person. But just to try and help get you a really speedy response, because we know that you're working very hard at home, then um, if you can direct them to those emails, that'd be fantastic. Um, so, yes, thank you. That's our presentation, hopefully giving thank you a you sense of what much, we can do. Julie, now, um, before I come to a question or two on the chat there, uh, could I just ask, um, there's obviously in the present circumstances there's going to be many uh, situations where a lecturer is sitting at home but unfortunately they're sitting in guilds textbooks either sitting in the office or in the library and they're not able to get to it so scanning the barcode isn't going to work are there any alternatives available yeah that's a really good question and something that has come up so the education team do have a workaround um, where they can help you unlock the books that might be inaccessible yeah so that's fine. And, and it does involve, um, say, library catalogues as well. So if you are a librarian and you're interested in unlocking um, your catalogue and you have the facility to pull a list, then there's workarounds for that. Absolutely. Yeah. 
and how would a member of staff go about uh, using that workaround at the moment? I think the best thing to do would be to get in touch with the team um, because there's a dedicated help desk. There's two, two and a half members of staff working on that. Um, so they'll be able to advise because it depends on the nature of the institution. If there's an admin user above the teacher or if it's just a teacher is the only one using it in the institution. So on a case by case basis, I think um, if they get in touch with the team, that'd be great. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, Scott, uh, Scott Connor uh, came in with a question. Scott, do you want to ask it live? I can unmute you. Oh. Or maybe I can. Right, there we go. Hi, Scott, are you able to speak? Okay, well, whilst he's looking for his microphone or whatever, um, I'll, he's typed in the text no. anyway. Oh, oh, I know what happened. It's, it's, it's not, the microphone's on a camera and the camera is shut down, so the microphone wasn't what so I've had to switch mics. Sorry about that. No, yeah, no. I was asking about um I asked it asked in the, the text uh about um the uh, the relaxation of the conditions, so the five to thirty percent and the copying from your own uh library at home and whether there would be a rewind or an unwind requirement at some point. So for example, if I copy stuff now at the 30% level, and then in July it all goes back to the 5% level, what what will the expectation be on staff who have issued 30% or something to their students? James, are you good to take um, that one? Yeah, sure. Yes. So, um, so th this is only a temporary extension to the license terms, and we 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 don't have the the um, the permission really, even for the rights holders, to allow this extra copying to continue after the end of July. So yes, the, the license will require you to go back to what you could have copied under the standard license for the beginning of next term for the autumn term. So um, so yeah, that is, that is, that's a good question. And it, it, it's all kind of, um, we do explain this in the detailed information on our website, but that is, you're generally, you're right, that, that it has to go back to the standard terms um, from September. So does that mean that if I've given out 30%, I'll have to take it? Assuming that we're back in, in normal working conditions, I'll have to say, look, give me all the 30% that's back. I'm going to have to give you just the 5% that I was allowed to give before. Sorry to put you on the spot, James. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, unfortunately, as I say, we, we don't have the means to have, we can't extend the rights to keep the copies up indefinitely and so there is there does have to be a time limit which we've currently set at 31st of July should things continue we'll be consulting further with the rights holders to um, see whether we can extend this um, and obviously if things go back to to, to normal nor sooner then we would have to um, uh, well we'll give everybody plenty of notice but we again would have to go back to the standard terms and and uh, so this it's important to say this is a temporary special condition that we've been able to apply by consulting with um, education publishers to do so. Okay, thanks, thanks James. Thank you very much. And um, we've got both further education and higher education users here. Could I just ask if there's any relevant salient differences between the regime for further and higher education? Yes, so I can definitely cover this one as well because um, I've been involved for the last few weeks in um, kind of developing both extensions for further education and higher education, and they are different. Um, for higher education, um, again, uh, we've relaxed the restrictions on ownership. So um, a academic or lecturer can copy their own their own editions that they own at home. Um, but their other um, changes are a bit different. And the main change with higher education is that um, while we are allowing um, well, publishers are allowing because this is opt-in for publishers in higher education. So there's a list of publishers on our website for whom you can copy up to 30% or three chapters rather than the standard 10%. Um, there's a, uh, I think there's over 50 publishers already opted in, so including many of the big ones. Um, the, so institutions can copy um, more from works published by those publishers, but that copying does need to be done through our digital content store platform. Um, I'm not sure whether any, everyone is familiar with that, but this is a workflow tool that we provide um, at no extra charge to universities to allow them to manage copying under that HE license. And it, um, 
it is used by over 120 universities already um, and we, we can very quickly onboard new new universities that don't currently use it so they can take advantage of the extended extent limit um, and the other thing is that where there is a extract in the DCS the digital content store that a university has already scanned another one has scanned then to, under these special terms um, any other university can, can assign that extract to one of their courses because we appreciate that it's very hard to get in and digitize uh, works. So, um, uh, so that's kind of in a nutshell. There's a lot, again, there's a lot of information about the higher education um, license extension on our website. There's also, um, uh, I don't know whether you're aware, the copyright literacy um, webinar, which is running exactly the same time as this one that Jane Soko and Chris Morrison run. Um, I've been on that the last few weeks to explain what we've been doing and um, it's also being presented today by my colleague David on that webinar. So if anyone is in HE or has um, uh, a need to know what's happening in the higher ed, higher ed sector and wants to hear about it, they can always go and listen to the recording of that webinar. Um, there's a question that's come up saying, is it better for FE to use the platform or register with the DCS? It does depend on your circumstances. So I think if you're in that kind of situation, then you should just drop us a line and we can get in touch and talk this through with you separately. Um, okay, thank you very much for that. Um, we've come to the end of the half hour and so to wrap up the recording, I'll, could I just say a big thank you to both James and Julie uh, for the, their insights into the CLA regime at these, in these difficult times for remote teaching. Um, I'll remind everyone that we've got another um, bunch of uh, webinars next week, Office 365, um, tweets and social media and Adobe Spark amongst it all and debunking online myths indeed. So hopefully look forward to that. Uh, this recording will be available uh, for you to uh, look back on and indeed to share and so hopefully you'll do that and again thank you once again pre uh, presenters and for the questions and cheers for now <laughs>